A few weeks had passed, giving our cellar employees a chance to sober up from their wild wine tasting experience. April, Stone, Huntley, Linus, and May were clocked in and enthusiastic to work, or at least as enthusiastic as they were ever going to be. That was until... Oh God, please, please no, no! April's ears perked up at the sound of disaster. What's going on? Stone asked. April shrugged. The two of them looked toward the entrance of the cellar, where they saw Oscar entering the store with tears in his eyes. He let out a beleaguered sigh. What happened, Oscar? April asked, trying to keep the excitement from her lips. Before Oscar could reply, Huntley popped out from the back room. Oscar, you didn't watch March of the Penguins again, did you? No. I won't make that mistake again. You said that last time. I kept thinking the penguin's gonna live. But no, Huntley. Something much worse has happened. Much, much worse. Oscar's colleagues widened their eyes. What's going on, Oscar? It's Bessie. She, she's done for. No, not Bessie. Who's Bessie? April asked, confused. Huntley, meanwhile, handed Oscar a tissue. Then he turned to April. What do you mean, who's Bessie? I mean, who's Bessie? She was the love of my life. Aww. My trusty companion. My reliable friend. My beautiful vehicle. Oh. She's been having trouble a while now. But I guess I just didn't want to face it. On the way here, Bessie was breaking down every mile. I barely got here on time. You're 40 minutes late. Emmett said, poking his head out from the back office. Oh, hush. Have a little sympathy. May retorted as she entered the store, returning from delivering a carryout. You know, I could fire you for talking back to me. But you won't. No, I won't. Emmett returned to his work. May turned to Oscar and took his hand in hers. Oscar, you said Bessie was still running as of this morning. Isn't there something we can do to fix her? Oh, certainly. I just don't have the funds. Oh, well, that's an easy fix. April and Stone cocked their heads. Easy? May grabbed the loose change from the tip jar near the cash register. Here, she said, handing it to Oscar. This is the first donation to the Bessie Fund. Those are our tips. Have a little heart, Stone. Do you want to end up like Emmett? Uh, no. Thank you so much, May. You said Bessie is outside, right? Let's go take some photos and set up a GoFundMe. Hey, what a great idea. May and Oscar ran outside, giddy. Emmett poked his head out again from his office while on a phone call. Please tell me that was work-related. It wasn't not not work-related? What? Emmett rolled his eyes and returned to his call. Yeah, sorry about that. You were saying? Despite May's typical avoidance for work tasks, she happily thrust herself into setting up Bessie's fundraising campaign. Four hours later, May had created a well-oiled machine. Oscar stood by his beloved Bessie, wearing a bow tie and reminiscing about the good old days with every customer who walked by. And he was sitting in that there passenger seat... When I, I said, Arnold, if you're making these action flicks ain't working for you, maybe you should run for governor. Wow, that's incredible! Linus and Huntley overheard this while handing a delivery to another customer. Is it talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger? Is he wearing my bow tie? Oscar, give me my bow tie back! May intervened wearing sunglasses and carrying an iPad. Linus, stop distracting the talent. 
That's my bow tie! Well, how would I know that? You're not wearing it. Because you stole it. I wouldn't be throwing around accusations if I were you. How about you just keep doing your job, and I'll keep doing mine? Wh wh I'm telling Emmett! Sure. See where that gets you. Linus huffed off, re-entering the store, Huntley trailing behind. Back at the cash register, Stone was running things while April scrolled her phone, pretending to supervise. Uh, two fifths of Bacardi and one bottle of Prosecco. That will be $39.25. Uh, would you like to round up to donate to the Bessie Foundation? Uh, um, uh, sure. Thanks, have a nice day. Emmett, having been informed of the situation by Linus, exited his office with Linus by his side. What is this I'm hearing about donations to the Bessie Foundation? And a stolen bow tie. And a stolen bow tie? I have no idea what's going on. Aren't you supposed to be supervising? I don't like to micromanage. <sighs> Huntley, go get May and Oscar from outside. April, please inform all staff to meet us here now. Huntley exited the store to retrieve May and Oscar, while April got on the intercom. Everyone who gets a paycheck from this place should meet at the register now. It's super serious. Emmett rolled his eyes. At the same time, Huntley re-entered with May and Oscar. You know, she was gonna call it talk around the block. But I said, honey, you gotta keep it simple. Just call it the Oprah Winfrey Show. Wow. That can't be true, right? April and Stone shrugged, befuddled. All right, let's make this quick. Time is money, people. May said, before returning to scrolling on her iPad. Yeah, that's right, May. Emmett said, taking the iPad from May's hands. Which is why you should listen to me. Your boss. Whose iPad is this? Mine. But I was happy to donate it to the cause. The cause is a 50-year-old car that has lived a full, long life. Look, I appreciate the fact that you all care so much about one of your fellow employees that you created a way to support him. But at the end of the day, we cannot derail our jobs to do this. But we could derail our jobs in pursuit of another goal? <sighs> April, that's enough. For any staff who receive donations on Oscar's behalf, please pass those along to Oscar and then stop fundraising on company time. You can do it when you're clocked out. But that's less fun. Ain't that a shame. Linus cleared his throat. Oh, yeah. And Oscar... Give Linus's bow tie back. Oscar reluctantly removed the bow tie and handed it to an indignant Linus. April and Stone returned to running the cash register, and Huntley returned to stocking. Oscar and May began to exit the store as their shifts were ending. Hey, Oscar. I'm sorry. Uh, are you kidding? May, you supported me and helped me raise money for Bessie. You have nothing to be sorry about. Well, yeah, but we only raised $200. You you said you need at least 6000 for repairs. Eh, as much as I hate to say it, I think Bessie's time may have passed. I could keep spending more and more money to keep her running, but I don't think she wants that. She served me well. She was an honorable and loyal steed. She accompanied me through the difficulties of Prohibition, supported me on the drive to and from Woodstock, and played a vital role in helping me escape my friend's cult. Um, how old are you again? Well, there comes a time in everyone's life where you have to let go. Yeah, I'm sorry, Oscar. Thanks. Thanks again, May. Oscar approached Bessie and placed his hand lovingly on the car's windshield. So long, old friend. Goodbye, Bessie. Oscar, would you like a ride home? Yeah, 
I would. How much do you charge for a ride? No, you don't need to pay me. How's 200 bucks sound? I can't accept that, Oscar. That's money for Bessie. Yeah, but she doesn't need it. And neither do I. You did 90% of the work getting this fundraising thing going, kid. It's all yours. Oscar handed May the $200. Uh, well, thanks. No problem. You got a real talent for fundraising, you know? You may want to think about pursuing that in some way. Thanks. Um, I'll do that. I'm parked over here. So tell me again, uh, what age did you first ride in Bessie? Yes. The year was 1922. I had just turned 18. And as May and Oscar headed home, May provided Oscar with the chance to once again reminisce about the memories that meant so much to him. Whether they were true or not didn't matter. All that mattered was that there was someone willing to listen. <laughs>